Hello there. This is YK Reviews. We're about to do a tier ranking for all the Star Wars movies and shows. So let's get into it here. So with this, we're going to be ranking every single Star Wars movie, every single Star Wars show. And just want to point out this, just going to be my opinion. I know with Star Wars, is everybody has different opinions with movies and shows, like where they rank them. I'm going to do it from like A, triple plus, like the best Star Wars out there to all the way down to an F. Again, this is just my opinion. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, anything that you feel is different, please let me know in the comment section down below. And also if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. I do plenty of tier ranking videos. Yeah, I've done one for all the MCU phases. Link will be somewhere around here. So check that out. Subscribe to the channel because there's gonna be plenty more as well tier ranking videos coming to the channel here. So this is everything from New Hope, very first Star Wars movie, all the way up till Mandalorian. And with the Star Wars shows, it's gonna be based on like the seasons as a whole, not per season because the video will just take way too long so this is all the way up until Mandalorian season three and this was honestly supposed to come out last week but with all the CinemaCon news coming out didn't have time to upload this video so that's why it's slightly later but let's just get straight into it here so this is just going to be in some random order here basically based on every single picture that we're showing here so it's not going to be in chronological order or release date order or anything like that just based on like every picture here so first off we're going to start off with Andor and this show came out last year and like this was a perfectly written show and or basically is a prequel to Rogue One which is a prequel to the New Hope movie I really enjoyed Rogue One and I really enjoyed Andor I was going to do a full in-depth spoiler review of the show but health-wise just took a huge dip for me in December so I wasn't able to record that or upload that video but I just loved the way the characters were written with Andor, like with like the story arc every three episodes, with Diego Luna's character as Cassie and Andor, with Andy Serkis's character as Kino Loy. So like each episode, like there was a three episode story arc as the season was progressing, but like the speech that Kino Loy just gave out in the um, that one episode, it just sums up the whole show itself. Like everything was just picture perfect. Everything was just so well written as each episode was progressing, as each mini story arc was going through. I thought this was peak, peak Star Wars. Like some of the Disney Plus shows have been very, very hit and miss. But with this Andor show, I thought it was just up there as one of the best written Disney Plus Star Wars shows. So when it comes to Andor, I'm giving this one an A. I really, really loved what they did with Andor. And with them announcing season two, I'm really excited and pumped to see what they're gonna do for season two. I'm just loving the Cassian Andor story arc, him going from like season one to till everything leading up until the events of Rogue One. So I really, really am enjoying going through Cassian Andor's character arc here. So really, really top notch. If you haven't seen this show, I highly, highly recommend, especially if you're a Star Wars fan. This is peak, peak Star Wars writing here. So yeah, Andor goes as an A for me. And the next one on the list here is actually one that sort of holds a special place in my heart because this movie was where me and my brother first got introduced to Star Wars. So we're talking about Star Wars Attack of the Clones, Star Wars Episode 2. This movie came out in 2002 and storylines wine, it wasn't that good. Like there was some very, very questionable story writing especially when it comes to like Anakin's decision makings or him and his battle with sand it just it took like a weird turn in the middle of the movie when it comes to him and Padme's character as well I just didn't think it was that solid when it comes to like the writing of the movie but like I said this movie has got a special place in my heart this is when me and my brother first got introduced to Star Wars this was the very first movie we ever watched so Attack of the Clones we went then back to watch Phantom of the Menace and Revenge of the Sith and then the rest is history basically but with attack of the clones one of my favorite sequences in this movie is you've got samuel l jackson's character versus Django fett the the fight sequences the third act when it comes to like that big sand pit with the creatures with the clones with the jedi i really really like that sequences however overall with this movie if we're ranking it from all like the episodes the star wars episodes this for me wasn't as strong like i said the first act was pretty decent, except the whole Jar Jar Binks situation, like which we'll get definitely get into when we talk about Phantom of the Menace. I liked the interaction between Obi-Wan, like Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen. Obi-Wan and um, Anakin together was just really entertaining, especially with the spaceships flying around and chasing like um, certain characters. But 
storyline wise isn't really as strong so when it comes to star wars attack of the clones episode 2 i'm giving this one a c only because of that third act and because this was my introduction to star wars i know a lot of people have this a lot lower on the list and i completely understand that and i get that for me it would go as, as a d just, but just because this is my first introduction to Star Wars ever, this is why it's going as a C for me here. And next up on the list is we've got The Bad Batch, season one and season two. Season two just finished, but I loved these characters when they got introduced into like the Clone Wars in the latter seasons. So just the journey that they go through, Crosshair's writing, I just think is fantastic. Like Crosshair, you've got Echo, Wrecker, Tech. Omega, I just love these characters. You love going on these adventures with them. It's peak, peak storyline writing for me here and everything about it, especially when it comes to like season two and what happens in the two part finale with season two with a certain character. If you haven't seen it, I'm not gonna give out any spoilers here, but you just really fall in love with these characters. You really enjoy everything that they're going through, everything that they're doing. You get Clone War type vibes when it comes to like certain episodes, especially in season two, like the mid season plot point in season two really had that Clone War vibes to it. And just all the um, adventures that they do go on when it's not focused on like cloning or anything like plot point wise when it comes to like the main villain of the season, you have fun, you, you're entertained, it's enjoyable. The characters, like I said, you get attached to them really really am fascinated with this and with them announcing season three and it being the final season i'm very disappointed that it's going to be finishing at season three but i am really really excited to see what they're going to do with season three especially because with season two ending the way it did again no spoilers i'm really i'm excited to see where the characters are going to go from there because everything's just gone up in the stakes so when it comes to bad batch for me once again another really really quality show it's going as an a for me uh, in my personal opinion here. And now the next one on the list here is kind of a frustrating one. With The Book of Boba Fett, I had really, really high expectations. I really liked the character of Boba Fett. And when he got introduced into The Mandalorian Season 2, I thought they're going to have a really, really strong storyline to go with when it comes to his actual show. But uh, the decision makings and the writing aspects of this was very, very frustrating. For example, in the middle of Bo The Book of Boba Fett, you had sort of a mid a spin-off Mandalorian show because as I mentioned in the Mandalorian season 3 review link will be somewhere around here as well for that the way season 2 ended Mandalorian dropped off Grogu to the Jedi season 3 episode 1 they're reunited and you have no idea why it's because they've explained it in the middle of the book of Boba Fett which just was baffling to me like you're focusing on Boba Fett his storyline his like battle with these villains in the show only to have like in the middle of the season just completely separate from that have Mando reunite with Grogu and I guarantee you not a lot of people watch the book of Boba Fett and when they watch Mandalorian they're confused as to why these two are reunited so it's not just that aspect of having Mandalorian a mini Mandalorian show in the middle of, of Boba Fett but in the first half of the season the first half of the show you had Boba you Fett had him being saved by the Tusken Raiders he spent the first half of the season training with them, helping them out, going on missions with them, only for them to get killed off and then have him look for people to help him fight these criminals that he's going after in the finale. Like, you had a perfect written aspect of the Tusken Raiders joining Boba Fett, helping him with his quest, saving the town, saving Tatooine, a, a good army. To then just kill them off halfway through the show, focus on the Mandalorian show, and then have a very, very flat finale. This, to me, just was a very, very good premise, failed execution. So when it comes to, like, the Book of Boba Fett, for me, this one's going as an F. Like, this was a really, really disappointing show. You have, like, peak, peak Star Wars show writing when it comes to Andor, even the Bad Batch. And then you've got, like, the other end of the spectrum when it comes to Boba Fett. Just overall very bland, very confusing writing, very confusing choices. So Book of Boba Fett goes as an F for me. Now next up on the list here is we've got The Empire Strikes Back and I'm just gonna put this right now. This for me is my favorite Star Wars movie in the whole franchise. The Empire Strikes Back is going as an A triple plus, like best, best movie for me. The writing in this, 
everything that happens from the new hope to then what is executed here and the way even everything is just left off with this i just thought was peak peak star wars writing the most iconic moments from star wars history comes in this movie like i wasn't around like i was way too young for the live reaction to vader revealing him to be luke's father i can only imagine the shock the awe that came with that and to be honest i wish i can go back in time and like actually experience that firsthand for the very first time and even like the introduction to yoda and like luke's training with yoda you've got han solo and leia han solo getting frozen in carbonite just everything that was going with this movie just was pure epicness and pure enjoyment i could rewatch this every single day because that's how much i enjoy this movie so return of the jedi hands down my favorite star wars movie a brilliant middle act when it comes to these three movies so hands down return of the jedi a triple plus for me now next up on the list is we've got the force awakens the star wars force awaken episode seven this was i'm i'm gonna say this now i apologize for all the fans of episode seven eight and nine those that do enjoy that trilogy of movies for those of you that really like it is one of your favorite like movies in the star wars franchise i'm really happy that you got to enjoy these trilogy of movies for me when it comes to force awakens this one is one of my favorite ones out of the three new ones so episode seven is my favorite out of episode seven eight and nine only because of like based just on this movie everything that was done with it the reintroduction to certain characters the storyline that was written the introduction of kylo ren i thought was played out really well in this movie but basing it off of the rest of the trilogy I think it just took a massive dip and it was just a lot of like behind the scenes drama like writing was just all over the place no distinct plan no direct plan and that's why when I spoke about the Star Wars announcements a couple of weeks ago announcing Rey Skywalker coming back the movies taking place 15 years after episode 9 and all that stuff I was very hesitant because of everything that was done in these three movies but when it comes to The Force Awakens this one is going as a C for me just because it, based on just this movie alone it was very good but it dips down a lot because of everything done in the next two movies but overall what they did throughout this movie I really really liked even like some of the lightsaber sequences are towards the end of the movie I thought was pretty well choreographed but just everything in terms of the future of the franchise after this really, really took a downhill. So for me, it goes as a C. And the next one we've got here is the Kenobi, Obi-Wan Kenobi season. I was really, really pumped for this. As I mentioned, like Star Wars episode one, two, three is the one I grew up with personally. So I grew up with these characters, knowing the fact that Hayden Christian's coming back, knowing that Ewan McGregor's coming back. We haven't seen them for 15 16 years whatever the time frame was so i was so pumped and so happy that we were getting an obi-wan kenobi show but once again just like the writing the decision makings them focusing more on like the inquisitors characters and just going with like certain directions even like certain character choices like episode one i believe it was when princess leia as a child is getting chased in this forest only for like these characters these people that were chasing her to be outsmarted by a branch on a tree a, and some bushes. Like, I just, I really was frustrated with the writing in this. I wanted to see more. I wanted to see more with Darth Vader. I wanted to see more with Obi-Wan, but it's just like, it sort of was like the first half was him babysitting and then the second half just was about the Inquisitors. So you just didn't flesh out or didn't take the opportunity of what this show could have been so it was very very disappointing so for me when it comes to obi-wan this is going as a d for me it would go as an f however i really loved the sequence between darth vader and obi-wan that final battle that they had and just like the emotion the pure heartbreak and joy that you get between the interactions there and even when like you see anakin's face and the voice changing too between darth vader and anakin and even like the flashback sequences i just got a really good kick out of it that's what i wanted more of that's what i wanted it to be focused more on not every other aspect that they did focus on so yeah when it comes to obi-wan this is going as a d for me and the next uh, movie we've got here is star wars the last jedi and basically this is what i'm talking about when it comes to like the direction of these next three movies so episode seven the force awakens was written by jj abrams then the next movie was then written by rian johnson so everything that was planned for 
J.J. Abraham's decisions or like what he wanted to do then gets completely outdone and undone by Rian Johnson's and it was just a complete mess honestly so with this movie too like the decision makings that they did especially when it comes to like Luke Skywalker just really frustrated me the action sequences were pretty decent the fight sequences the fight choreography was top-notch high quality however everything else when it comes to screenwriting storytelling decision making with certain characters just felt very bland and just questionable for me luke's writing was the most frustrating for me ray skywalker kylo ren like their bond and their like characters that were written with one another just felt very confusing at times i just I wasn't a fan of this movie whatsoever. I just did not have a good time with this movie. I had more of a fun, like each movie from episode seven, eight and nine, I was having less and less fun. When I was watching this, I didn't watch it in the cinemas. I watched it for the first time a few years ago and then I rewatched it in time for this video here again. And I just felt bored. I kept checking the runtime just to see when this movie was gonna finish. Each movie, I was just getting more and more bored and more and more frustrated with it. So when it comes to The Last Jedi, for me, this one is going as a D here. I just I just was not a huge fan of this movie whatsoever. Now, next up on the list here, we've got Mandalorian. So this is season one, two, and three. Season three just really took a huge dip. A lot of plot that they could have focused on, they didn't focus on. So you've got the Mandalorians reuniting taking mandalore you've got the dark saber plot so rather than focus on that you have jack black making a cameo lizzo making a cameo you've got an episode dedicated to two characters that didn't need an episode dedicated to them you have episodes where you're rescuing a child from a dragon basically so i just i really wasn't a fan of season three i really thought they could have explored more even like the finale was a it was a decent finale but you just sort of brushed over a couple of plot points like Moff Gideon's clones just getting destroyed like that no exploration of that the dark saber just getting crushed and destroyed like you spent all of season two with that only for that to just be destroyed like it's nothing no tension between Bo-Katan and Mando whatsoever so season three just really took a huge dip for me but season one and two I really had a fun time with it they had cameos in season one and two don't get me wrong but the cameos made sense Ahsoka appearing, mentioning Grand Admiral Thrawn. So all these cameos were making sense when it comes to Star Wars, but with season three, it wasn't just that strong. But I loved, like season two is probably my favorite season and that season two finale, obviously just a huge classic when it comes to that reveal in season two. So when it comes to The Mandalorian overall, this one for me is going as a B, just because of like what happened in season three and just like, the dip in terms of storytelling but overall a really really fun show i'm hoping that it does go back into like more of just mando grogu just going on separate adventures the mandalorian plot is its own separate thing now but i have a fun time with mandalorian so it goes as a b and the next up on the list here is we've got basically the first ever star wars movie a star wars new hope this was the introduction to star wars for many many people here and what an introduction this was like the first opening sequence you've got is r2d2 and c3po out in a desert and everything just story building the introduction to luke and then we've got obi-wan you've got darth vader you've got han solo just everything was just going really well with this movie it's such a fun movie a brilliant opening movie a brilliant start to the original trilogy and then the third act that space fight sequences there like i mentioned many times with Star Wars, the spaceship sequences, the flying sequences, the galaxy fighting, TIE fighters, spaceship fighting is one of my favorite things about Star Wars because they do it so well. And with this movie coming out so, so long ago in, in the very late 70s and with like the visual effects, CGI, that kind of stuff wasn't as strong as it is right now, I thought it looked stunning and the destruction of the Death Star, just everything was just going really well with this. And this is what star wars is about this was just really well done obviously like i said it coming out in the late 70s obviously the star wars the uh, lightsaber battles wasn't as strong the flying sequences the space battles wasn't as strong but it still just came across really really well i really love this movie again for me this one is like in the top three star wars movie i'll get this is my third favorite star wars movie so for me when it comes to a new hope again this is just going as an a triple plus really really fantastic introduction to star wars a really brilliant opening 
first movie of a trilogy of brilliant movies going as an A triple plus here. And then next up on the list here, we've got the very, very first episode, if we're going chronologically here, is the episode one, Phantom Menace. There was a lot with this that they did well, especially when it comes to like Darth Maul, Qui-Gon Jinn, the casting choices, but this was more of like a political type movie rather than a Star Wars movie. It's basically setting up how Palpatine became who he was in the original trilogy here. So I like that they are building on that. It is a really slow burn, slow paced movie, which isn't the problem. The problem is, is that you have like other aspects and other elements. Like you've got Padme going after a child, which is like Luke Skywalker. That relationship I just found very weird. Having Jar Jar Binks, which was a frustrating written character, like the decision makings and the choices he was doing in the movie, was just very frustrating. Some of the political background situation with the movie just felt very drab and bland and not as entertaining as it could have been. But the pod racing sequences, the third act with the battle between Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan and Darth Maul, I've really, really enjoyed. Those sort of elements was entertaining for the movie itself. But overall, movie-wise, very, very weak when it comes to like, you've got the original trilogy and this is like i said i was too young to like be able to like experience this but then you go from like the first three movies the original trilogies then they introduce this movie i'm curious to see people that did see it in the cinemas and did see it when it did come out for the very first time what your thoughts are when you go from the trilogy movies to this one please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below but when it comes to like the phantom menace again this one is going as a c for me because like I said, I like the slow pace, slow burn, getting the background knowledge of Palpatine and how he got into power. But some of the questionable decision makings was what pulled it back a bit for me. So yeah, it's going as a C. Now, the next one we've got on the list is Star Wars Rebel, an animated show. If you haven't seen it, I highly, highly recommend. This is one of the best written Star Wars shows that they've done animated wise. So right, right off the bat, I'm just gonna put this as an A. This, with Ahsoka coming out in the summertime in August, I highly, highly recommend watching the Star Wars. The characters that they do, because this is like fresh characters. Characters that you've not seen in any previous projects, except for Ahsoka and stuff like that. But the main course characters, brand new written characters, done by Dave Filoni. And I just really, really enjoyed what they did with this from season one to season two and the rest of the show and the rest of the season, the twists, the turns having Grand Admiral Thrawn introduced into there. And I loved every single minute of this show. I watched it really, really late. I watched it for the very first time last year. And I just regretted watching it so late. I really wish I watched it when it was coming out. We, when it did first originally air, I had such a fun time with these characters. They're such a well-knit bond. Every, the way it's just escalating from season to season and just everything that happened throughout the show. You just can't help but love like the writing and the direction with this. So yeah, when it comes to Star Wars Rebel, it's going as an A, I highly, highly recommend here. And the next up on the list here is we've got the finale to the original trilogy. So you've got Star Wars Return of the Jedi. So you have everything, the big stakes, everything that came out from the Empire Strikes Back to now the consequences and then how the Jedi fight back. I really, really enjoyed this. Granted, I know that the third act when it comes to like the Ewoks and that battle was a little bit weak for certain people. For me, as an adult, I can understand the criticism as a child. Like it's very hit and miss when it comes to the Ewoks. And if you've seen How I Met Your Mother, Barney Simpson really explained the Ewoks situation perfectly done. If you're a child, you liked it. If you're an adult, you weren't a fan of it. I feel like that is the case. It might be completely different. So I understand the criticism when it comes to like that battle with the Ewoks. However, overall, just like the lead up to it, everything that was done, the story arc and the character arc with Darth Vader, especially from like the New Hope all the way to here and like how, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the movie, how he was able to turn to like the light side, kill, and I'm air quoting this because of like the future movies that they do, but how he was able to kill Palpatine and that redemption arc that he does go through, I loved. And just Luke, Leia, Han Solo, like the characters that you get introduced from the whole trilogy, this isn't just based on this movie alone, but the whole trilogy, everything about it. I really, really enjoyed everything about this. So once again, 
with the return of the jedi this again going as an a triple plus like the original trilogy is just by far my favorite of the star wars movies it's fantastically written really well executed dialogue character arcs redemption arcs battle sequences just everything just flowed about it really well so for me if you are very new to star wars i highly, highly recommend the original trilogy that is one of the best written star wars movies in the whole like, franchise here and next up on the list here is we've got revenge of the sith out of the new older uh, trilogies however you want to call it the middle trilogy part the one that i grew up watching personally revenge of the sith is the best one out of the three movies that anakin skywalker character arc that they go through where he's killing count dooku where he's like getting manipulated by palpatine and you cannot help but like the battle between obi-wan and anakin i'm just getting goosebumps just talking about it obi-wan getting that high ground it's over anakin i have the high ground just that turn and just everything the way it escalated in this movie you really feel it and just you see anakin turning from anakin skywalker to darth vader was one of the most brilliantly written characters in cinema history, my personal opinion. Anakin Skywalker to Darth Vader that turn. And you just feel that emotion between Anakin and Obi-Wan. You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy this and not join them! I'm like, I'm just... Like, I don't, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but the goosebumps I'm getting just discussing this, like the emotion, the pure emotion between Anakin and Obi-Wan going from that, like, battle sequences. Obi-Wan talking about how Anakin was the chosen one, the regret, the emotion. Oh, like, I really, really am a huge fan of the Revenge of the Sith movie. So when it comes to Revenge of the Sith, this one for me is the better one out of, like, the newer movies. And for me, it's going as an A here one of the better written Star Wars movies and one of the better written characters with Anakin here and even that that ending too where you've got the introduction to like Luke and Leia as babies and what happens to Padme and how everything is set up for The New Hope just perfectly written there so yeah it's going as an A for me now for me the next one here is Rogue One I did a review about this back in like September um link will be somewhere around here just before the Andor series and this, another one that was really, really fun and really well written. The characters you're getting introduced here to, it was brilliant. Like, you really get to feel these characters. You really get to connect with these characters. You got Saw Guerrero coming back into this movie here, and we see what happens to him. The third act, the fight sequences, the battle sequences, is one of my favorite in Star Wars movies. So I really had a fun time with Rogue One. And just the, the plot of it was pretty simple. The premise of the movie was pretty simple and easy to follow. Like, it's just everything is placed for you in front of you so it's easy to follow and everything that they do go through with this movie everything that from the start of the movie as the movie progresses from the second act to the third act i really had a fun time with that and the characters once again brilliantly written brilliant to follow so when it comes to rogue one there was a couple of nitpicks i had with this movie here and there however i had a fun time with it so for me rogue one is going as a b for me here and next up another movie that's sort of like detached from like the trilogy of movies here is you've got Han Solo's movie. So basically the backstory and the prequel to Han Solo as a character. Personally, I had a fun time with it. I know that it didn't really need to be written. It didn't really need to be done. But I really had a fun time with this character. I had a fun time with this movie. Getting to see how Han Solo and Chewbacca met and how they became who they are today. I really, really had a fun time with it. The character that plays Han Solo too. I thought was brilliant as Han Solo the character and you've got like a younger version of Lando as well which we didn't really get to talk about in the original trilogy I thought was fantastic there so I had a fun, fun time with it obviously the storyline the plot was slightly weak not as strong as it could have been but based on like the character that you are introduced in the original trilogy with Han Solo you could only do so much and try to like build a good two-hour movie or whatever it was but overall it was a fun movie third act sort of dipped for me and if you were to ask me would you want to see a sequel i honestly would i did again i had a fun time with this movie but when it comes to solo i think for me this one is going as like a strong c probably the c plus the highest c ranking so far out of all of them there so yeah for me it's going as a c plus here and the next one here is i'm not sure if a lot of people have seen it's the clone wars movie so this was the prequel to the clone wars tv show 
I'll be honest, I wasn't a huge, huge fan of the Clone Wars movie. Based on like what happens from that movie all the way up until the end of Clone Wars Season 7, really great introduction to the Ahsoka character. But in terms of the actual plot of the movie, and I like the interaction between Anakin and Ahsoka and like how they first get introduced and everything, but the plot of the movie just felt very kind of like bland and felt very meh. I thought they could have done a bit more with it, but for what it was, having a Clone Wars movie, I think it's fine. I think it's okay. So for me personally, it's going as a D. Again, the strongest D, the highest D movie, so D+. plus. But not really much to say when it comes to the Clone Wars movie. However, when it comes to the actual Clone Wars TV show, this takes place between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. So you've got seven seasons stretching out between that time period. And my god, this show was just epic for me. The finale, the season seven, I won't reveal what happens, but I've seen, let's just say the scene between Ahsoka and Rex when Ahsoka takes off Rex's helmet, I've seen so many times. Just that pure emotion and the powerful sequences that they do here. But like, you really get to see like the impact of the Clone Wars spread across the whole galaxy. You have so many characters. You even get like the Knight Sisters. You get a lot of backstory between Count Dooku, Obi Wan, Yoda, Mace Wind, like just so many characters that you get introduced to. And the clones themselves, like Rex, Cody, you had Comet, you had Fives, you had so many characters and clones that you personally got invested with. And just you see the impact and everything that happened with the clones over the course of the show. I just, oh, I love the Clone Wars. I really had a fun time with it. So yeah, when it comes to the Clone Wars animated show, highly recommend. The first couple of seasons, start off very slow does take a while to like really build up and really kick on but when it does kick on i mean you have mandalorians getting introduced you have clones you have the jedi you have the, the sith just oh, i really really cannot recommend this enough so yeah clone wars for me goes as an a really really strong show animated wise you've got bad batch rebels and clone wars all as an A for me because I love the animated shows when it comes to them. Brilliantly written and Clone Wars, again, I really cannot recommend enough. The latter, like the last couple of seasons and the, especially the impact you have when it comes to like the events that take place between the Revenge of the Sith with Anakin turning, that co coinciding with Order 66 and coinciding with Clone Wars animated show. If you haven't seen that, honestly, just go watch that. Just Go watch the final season, season seven. If you haven't seen anything else where it comes to animated shows, just go watch season seven and just watch that win correlating with Revenge of the Sith. Like, I, I honestly cannot describe in words how emotionally strong, powerful and emotional that sh season is. But overall, Clone Wars, brilliantly written. And then you go from like a really strong, powerful, brilliantly written show to our last on the list here is you've got so we've got star wars the rise of skywalker and i am i'm at lost for words to be honest with you and once again if you really do like this movie i'm really happy that you got to enjoy it and you got to like have a fun time with this movie but i really just i just can't i really can't have anything positive to say when it comes to this movie. This is one of my most frustrating movies I have witnessed when it comes to Star Wars. I am so frustrated when it comes to, spoiler alert, Palpatine's return. I mean, it shows in the trailer anyway, but honestly, the less said about this movie, the better. I'm just honestly going for an F when it comes to this movie. This for me is my worst, my hate, most hated movie of the whole Star Wars franchise. Like. I just got so frustrated watching this and that's why I mentioned that I'm worried about Rey Skywalker's writing. Once again, like I mentioned, so you've got J.J. Abraham, J.J. Abrams writing episode seven, you've got Rian Johnson writing episode eight, and then you bring back J.J. Abrahams for episode nine. It just, everything was just all over the place. Just writing wise, just didn't make any sense. Like nothing was plotted. It felt like you wrote episode seven, episode eight, you go back and change it 
everything and like wanting to go from a different direction to then episode nine wanting to go back to a different direction so you can really feel that you can really feel the impact on that and with episode nine just even that third act too like it was just really frustrating for me and i just don't want to bash it too much because there are people that do enjoy it but i just i really couldn't for me so that wraps it up for the star wars movies and shows tier ranking list here this is the final outcome i know there's going to be a lot of like split opinions mixed opinions a lot of people are going to be disagreeing a lot of people might be agreeing with my list let me know all your thoughts about that in the comment section down below that's my list here again the original trilogy my favorite trilogy one that you can just really really enjoy but let me know yours in the comment section down below. What's your favorite Star Wars movie and your least favorite Star Wars movie? And if you've seen the shows, which one is your favorite? Which one's your least favorite? Please let me know in the comment section down below. And also, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos here. Plenty more coming your way here. We've got the weekly entertainment news video coming out later on this week, along with a full in-depth spoiler review for The Last of Us TV series, the video game adaptation as well. So keep an eye out on that channel. And also, I have got a Twitter link is in the description down below. So go ahead, follow me there so that you'll know whenever I do post. And if you haven't already, check out the CinemaCon, all the announcements. The playlist will be on the channel around here. If you want to know all about the latest project coming out with all the movie studios, the playlist will be somewhere around here. So check that out. But again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. This is YK Reviews. This is going to be posting up before May 4th. So you know what? May the force be with you. Peace.